All right, so we've already talked about one of the kinds of stories that we tell as user experience designers. We talked about personas. Um, we tell a lot of other kinds of stories in our typical UX deliverables. We talk about what our users are gonna do. We create kind of stories that, of what we could create. And we even tell stories about the work that we're about to do. So I'm gonna tell you guys about some of the stories that we don't tell. Let me tell you a little bit about myself before I jump in. Um, I am a partner at Nurture. Over the last five years, I've been really lucky to have been able to work with 102 B2B software companies. Um, so seeing the insides of these companies and kind of getting to work on a bunch of different kinds of B2B products, um, I've seen a couple of trends and patterns. So the pattern that I've seen is that the stories that we're telling our teams, the stories that we're telling our engineers, that we're telling our product managers, they shape our companies. They shape how we position our product. We, they shape how our users perceive our product. And that perception kind of fundamentally shapes the company overall. So I'm going to tell you guys a story. And we're going to talk about a protagonist. Maybe it's Nemo. And this is not the story I'm going to tell you guys. So sit back. And I'm going to walk you guys through kind of an archetypal story that we've seen from all these patterns from working with a bunch of B2B companies. So I do have good news, and I have bad news. The bad news is, in this story, you guys are the people in the van. The good news is that the story I'm going to walk you guys through was a blockbuster. And it wasn't a blockbuster once or twice. It was a blockbuster five times. So I'm going to relate Mission Impossible to what we've seen on the inside of B2B product teams. So for those of you who haven't seen the Mission Impossible movies, I'll walk you through the plot line really quickly. Our protagonist is Ethan Hunt. He's a former CIA operative. And Ethan gets to talk to a different boss in a bunch of other of his movies, and his boss gives him a mission or a goal. And of course, Ethan has to decide if he would like to accept this mission or not. And of course, the movies wouldn't be cool if he didn't accept the mission. Um, so Ethan rallies up a team of people, and these people are behind him. And throughout the entire movie, what they're doing is they're removing obstacles that are in his path. They're helping him to become successful in his mission. So. For most of the movie, we see him doing some really cool shit. The thing that we pay less attention to in these movies, and the thing that I had actually completely forgotten, is that when stuff goes wrong, he calls back to his team. Because if they couldn't help him, he's kind of screwed. Um, so. These people are the people that are sitting in the van. They're helping him to overcome the obstacles that, are, that he's encountering. When you know, they're telling him, in 10 feet, turn left, just do it. The guy over there, you should keep an eye out on him. He's reaching into his pocket. So they're telling him about the obstacles, and they're predicting where he's going to run into trouble. So we want him looking cool and not looking like, uh, they, we don't want them directing him to be hanging off a plane as it's taking off. So what can we as product people, as user experience designers, learn from Mission Impossible? The first thing we can learn is to tell the right story. And this story, a lot of times, is described as jobs to be done. We talk about that there's a job to be done. But I would argue that there's, instead of a job to be done, there's a mission to be accomplished. Because the way that we tell these stories, it really frames the way that other people on our team perceive it. And to be honest, who cares about somebody else's job? It doesn't sound that exciting. 
So when we think about a lot of these deliverables that we're creating, I'd like to take them from a different perspective, thinking about what are the obstacles that people have been running into and how can we shape this story so that we talk about these people's mission, not just their demographic information. Um, the same for journeys. Where do they run into obstacles? Where do they run into problems? And what kind of stories can we tell about the obstacles that they may run into? And the same for user, um, user stories. So the, the big thing here is that in Mission Impossible, it's not missions impossible. You're not going on seven missions. You're not having Ethan Hunt fly from Norway to France to China. That would be insanity. And it's insane to think that our product teams can focus on multiple missions at one time. Focus on one mission and focus on de-obstacleizing that mission. Focus on removing the obstacles that are in your user's path. It's so much easier to remove an obstacle than it is for us to get, we tend to get attracted to these really shiny objects. And those shiny objects are usually new features that we think will help us beat our competitor, rather than focusing on the obstacles that actually are put in front of our users. So we tend to get overwhelmed with stuff like JIRA or some sort of project management system where I know you guys always have like a huge <laughs> backlog and there's tons of stuff that we could focus on. But focusing on the biggest obstacle that's preventing your users from their ultimate success is the first thing that we should focus on. Um, the second thing that we can learn from Mission Impossible is that the data helps you see. And I'm going to bring the van back again. Um, in these movies, um, the, the shit always hits the fan when the feed goes out and you can't see what's happening, there's no audio, and they can no longer help Ethan when he's in a tough spot. He's on his own. So as product people, keeping an eye on the pulse of our company through quantitative and qualitative data helps us to see what our customers are doing. It helps us to actually feel like we're on these missions with them. So the quantitative data, we can learn so much about what is our retention rate? Are our users who are coming into the product for the first time becoming activated? And then are they using these new features that we've created? Or are they actually churning? Have they rarely used the product in the last six months? These are numbers that we should be able to recite off the top of our heads and be aware of as we're picking which problems that we want to solve. Now the numbers only tell a very small part of the story. Qualitative data and user research can help fill in the gaps that we have with our quantitative data. I'm sure a lot of you guys have user researchers on your team. It helps to kind of paint a picture of what the data is telling us. We can see that 80% of people clicked on this button, but we don't know if they were confused or if they were actually engaged. So being on these missions with with our users in user research helps us to really understand what it's like to be in their shoes. Do we truly understand their mission? Do we actually know what problems they're going to run into? And I don't know, the Mission Impossible where he's like climbing up the building and his glove goes out. Um, if we weren't on the mission with him, could we actually know what happened? Could we actually predict um, he says, you know, something bad happened with my glove. I don't know. I was on top of this huge building. Um, can we trust the users to report that to us, or can we go on this mission with them and actually observe the problems that they're having so that we can create a better solution? The third thing we can learn from Mission Impossible is to keep your people alive. So there are five Mission Impossible movies, and each of them has brought in a pretty nice um, sum. And the Mission Impossible movies have been going on for 19 years. That's a, that's a pretty long time. If we had killed Ethan off in the first movie, we would have lost the potential for two, three, four, and five. The same way that we could lose a user who's not having their obstacles removed, who's not being successful in the application, and who ultimately turns out. 
So we lose a lot of potential revenue just on the potential for churn. Instead, we see a lot of companies that are just trying to throw people into the top of the funnel and hope that they stick. So by focusing on the problems that our users are having and how we can make them successful in the application slowly, because you tell Ethan to turn around one corner and he doesn't hit a building, that's a small success on his entire mission. So there are three things that we can learn from Mission Impossible that will help us be better designers and better product people. The first one is to tell the right story, to tell an engaging story that gets your product team and the rest of your organization really excited about the mission that your user is on. The second is that the data helps you see. If we don't have data, we're completely blind and we're just designing for ourselves, ultimately. And the third thing is to keep your people alive. Retention is so much easier than acquiring new users. So focusing on how we can retain our users and make them successful is the ultimate goal. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.